Let's take a look at the headlines first. A day after resignation, Delhi Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung meets Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Government looks at potential successors. Minister of State for Home Kiran Rijiju meets Manipur Chief Minister Okram Ebobi Singh, says state government can't escape responsibility for humanitarian crisis due to 52-day economic blockade. Centre defends its move to grant domicile certificate to West Pakistan refugees in Jammu and Kashmir refutes charges that the decision is motivated by Hindutva agenda. And the man believed to be suspect in the Berlin Christmas market attack killed in Milan. The dead man was identified as 24-year-old Tunisian. Let's take a look at the news in detail now. Outgoing Delhi Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung on Friday met Prime Minister Narendra Modi and apprised him of the reasons for his resignation. Focus has now shifted to the search for Jung's successor as the central government is reportedly mulling over a number of options to replace the LG. A day after the surprise resignation of Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung, the centre is reportedly discussing names for his successor. However, as per reports, the government has not yet accepted Jung's resignation. In a related development, Jung met Prime Minister Narendra Modi and apprised him of the reasons for his resignation. He said he requested the Prime Minister to relieve him after three years as Delhi LG. Meanwhile, Minister of State for Home Hans Raj Gangaram Ahir said the government had not forced Jung to tender his resignation. कोई भी व्यक्ति कोई भी अधिकारी अपने निजी स्तर पे निर्णय ले सकता है उन्होंने निर्णय लिया है प्रोसेस चल रही है अभी अभी हो सकता है हमारे होम सेक्रेटरी साहब का सोच का अर्ज इस्तीफा पहुंचा होगा एचएम साहब का सोच जाएगा उस पे निर्णय होगा हम प्रोसेस में हम भेज देंगे राष्ट्रपति महोदय के पास में एचएम साहब करेंगे Earlier, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia met the outgoing Lieutenant Governor at his residence. कुछ कुछ इंसिडेंट्स इस तरह के होते रहे दिल्ली में चिकन गुनिया वगैरह का और इन सब का इसलिए वो इस्तीफा नहीं कर पाए वो छोड़ नहीं पाए लेकिन उनका मन एक साल से था ऐसा उन्होंने मुझे बताया Meanwhile, reports said that Anil Bajal, who was Home Secretary in the Atal Bihari Vajpayee-led BJP government, reportedly tops the list of probables for the Lieutenant General's position. Former Delhi Police Commissioner B.S. Basi and Puducherry Governor Kiran Bedi are already doing the rounds as potential candidates for the post. 66-year-old Jung resigned on Thursday, citing personal reasons for his decision. After Najib Jung's resignation, a lot of new names for the post of Lieutenant Governor are in discussion. But will the Kejriwal government understand the constitutional position of Lieutenant Governor of Delhi as the constitution and law will remain the same no matter who the next LG is? With video journalist Shamlal Anudivan for Rajya Sabha TV. The two-day GST council ended in New Delhi on Friday. It will now meet again on January 3rd and 4th to iron out pending issues. A decision on dual control of IGST are pending while there was agreement on law for compensating states. The finance minister said that dual control and cross-empowerment are the two issues that remain to be sorted, while the rest of the draft of supporting GST laws has been approved. A legally vetted draft of the law for compensation to states will be placed before the GST council at the next meeting. Consensus has however eluded on the model GST law. The subsequent GST legislations, CGST, IGST and compensation law could not be introduced in the winter session of the parliament that ended last week. And this has threatened the April 2017 rollout target. So the primary draft of uh, CGST and the SGST law comprising of uh, 197 <coughs> provisions and five schedules has been approved. There were some portions which were left out on which uh, 
either some representation was made by a state government or we could not reach a consensus. So today morning we went into each one of those issues and many of those issues have been sorted out. And now with regard to the draft, only a few issues remain. Only those blanks are there which relates to dual control and cross empowerment. Manipur is struggling with an economic blockage, protests and violence for more than 50 days. Normal life is paralyzed as the state focus shortages and escalating costs of essential supplies like food and fuel. Union Minister Kiran Rijiju today reached Manipur to review the situation. He did not say if the blockade will end anytime soon. As the economic blockade entered its 53rd day, Minister of State for Home Kiran Rijiju visited Imphal on Friday to review the situation. He met the Manipur Chief Minister and other officials over the disruption being caused by the United Naga Council. They are very well aware of what you have already uh, projected the issue here. Despite that, if there are anything additional which we need to take steps, we'll definitely take it. Rijiju stressed that the Manipur government must discharge its constitutional duties by ending the blockade immediately and bring back normalcy to the state. He also added that the central government wants law and order to prevail in the state. Road blockade is unacceptable and the state government has to ensure that there is no further road blockade. And for that the support will be given by us. However, the ground situation continues to be worrisome. Three government offices, including the office of recently created Kamjong district, were burnt down by unidentified persons. In another incident, two rooms of the mini-secretariat were set on fire by unidentified persons in Ukrul district on Friday. Out of anger, we have started this uh, controlled economic blockade and I would say that we are not against anybody. Let it be Nagas, Cookies or anybody. We are just, it's a form of protest. It's a form of protest against the government that why they are letting us suffer for the past 50 days. The United Naga Council is enforcing the blockade to denounce the creation of seven new districts from areas inhabited by the Nagas in Manipur. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The centre government today defended its move to grant domicile certificate to West Pakistan refugees. Dismissing charges that the move had a Hindutva agenda behind it, the government said that the nation owes it to them to ensure that the refugees had dignified means of livelihood. Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, Jitendra Singh, said the state government, in consultation with the Home Ministry, devised a mechanism where each of the refugees could be provided a proof of identity so that he or she could be enabled to apply for government jobs. Defending its move to grant domicile certificates to West Pakistan refugees in Jammu and Kashmir, the centre on Friday refuted charges that the move had a Hindutva agenda behind it. It claimed that the nation owed refugees a dignified means of livelihood. Centre said it has devised a mechanism where each of the refugees could be provided a proof of identity so as to enable them to apply for government jobs. These are some of the persons who have been there in the last 70 years but because of certain constitutional reasons they do not have the citizenship uh, certificate or the state subject certificate and therefore I think the nation owes to give them some kind of uh, an identity proof so that at least they could apply for a job. Both the opposition and separatist parties have came together to oppose the decision. They allege that the government was removing the roadblocks in integrating refugees into the state. The separatists have called statewide protests from Friday. Police and paramilitary forces have been asked to maintain law and order. They say that this is a dilution of the special status and this will also change the demography because uh, majority of the, not only majority, but the West Pakistan refugees are basically Hindus and uh, Sikhs. And so they are protesting against it and uh, uh, they have uh, once again tried to vitiate uh, the peaceful situation in Jammu and Kashmir. This is highly condemnable. Anybody who belongs to Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh and is a permanent resident of Jammu and Kashmir will not allow anybody to trample the state subject laws which have been brought into the state in 1927 by Maharaja Hari Singh. And any attempt to do so will be resisted by everybody 
हु बिलोंग्स टू जम्मू एंड कश्मीर वेस्ट पाकिस्तान से है इनको पा, पाकिस्तान पंजाब से है इनको इंडियन पंजाब में बसाना चाहिए या वापस पाकिस्तानी पंजाब भेज दो या और कहीं अंडोमान निकोबार में बसा दो लेकिन यहाँ किसी भी सूरत में हम ये इनको रहने की इजाजत नहीं देंगे अगर रह रहे हैं शरणार्थी तो रह रहे रह जाए हमें उससे कोई आपत्ति नहीं है मगर सिटेड सब्जेक्ट किसी भी सूरत में हम इनको देने नहीं देंगे क्योंकि ये मुतनाजा करता है अगर ऐसा होता है तो हम यहाँ एक नई एजुटेशन स्टार्ट होगी जिसकी जो कहीं थमने वाली एजुटेशन नहीं होगी इंडिपेंडेंट लेजिस्लेटर शेख अब्दुल राशिद एंड हिज सपोर्टर्स वर डिटेन इन श्रीनगर आफ्टर दे प्रोटेस्टेड अगेंस्ट द मूव द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑन थर्सडे क्लैरिफाइड इट वाज नॉट ग्रांटिंग डोमिसाइल सर्टिफिकेट्स बट इंस्टेड वाज इशुइंग आइडेंटिटी कार्ड्स जहां आके 70 सालों से हम लोग जहां रह रहे हैं हमारी चार हमारी जहां चार जनरेशन जो वो खत्म हो चुकी है और आज भी अगर हमें जम्मू कश्मीर में जहाँ की नागरिकता ना मिले तो इससे दुखद और क्या समाचार होगा द वेस्ट पाकिस्तान रिफ्यूजी सेटल इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर आर सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया एंड हैव द राइट टू वोट इन पार्लियामेंट्री इलेक्शन हाउ दे आर नॉट परमानेंट रेजिडेंट ऑफ द स्टेट अंडर द जम्मू एंड कश्मीर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन दे डू नॉट एंजॉय वोटिंग राइट टू द स्टेट असेंबली एंड लोकल बॉडीज ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi addressed a rally on Friday in Uttarakhand's Almora district. He once again criticized the government's move to demonetize old 500 and 1000 rupee notes and called the move an economic robbery. Rahul also said more than 100 people have lost their lives since the announcement and claimed that the prime minister was mocking the poor by calling them thieves. He threatened that all cash is not black money and all black money is not cash. However he also asserted that the Congress party is committed to obliterate corruption from the country he also demanded to know the names of those who have been hoarding black money note bandi kale dhan ke khilaf nirnay nahi tha bhrashtachar ke khilaf nirnay nahi tha note bandi ek aarthik dakati thi aarthik dakati ढाई साल से ढाई साल से नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने सिर्फ एक काम किया है हिंदुस्तान के गरीबों पर आक्रमण करा है इन द वेक ऑफ इंक्रीज डिजिटल पेमेंट्स पोस्ट डीमोनेटाइजेशन द होम मिनिस्ट्री हैज आस्ट डिजिटल पेमेंट्स एंड ई कॉमर्स कंपनीज टू बीफ ऑफ देयर साइबर सिक्योरिटी Home Ministry has reportedly told the Information Technology Ministry and concerned agencies to communicate the concerns of the government to the companies involved in e-commerce. The ministry said the threat of cyber attacks cannot be ignored especially when people are adopting digital payments as a new way of life. Let's now take a look at some more news from across the nation in Nationwide. Congress on Friday released a list of 16 more candidates for the upcoming Punjab Assembly polls. The party dropped two sitting MLAs and renominated six others by bringing in four fresh faces. The announcement was made after Congress President Sonia Gandhi cleared the names at a meeting of the Central Election Committee. With this, Congress has announced 77 candidates including 61 which were announced earlier. The CBI asked Uttarakhand Chief Minister Harish Rawat to appear before it on December 26th in connection with a probe into the purported sting operation case. This is the second time that Rawat has been summoned on a preliminary inquiry registered by it. The alleged sting operation took place on April 29th, showing Rawat offering bribes to rebel Congress lawmakers in order to support him during a flow test in the Uttarakhand Assembly. The Enforcement Directorate on Friday issued a fresh attachment order worth 44 crore rupees in connection with its money laundering probe in the Madurai Granite scam case in Tamil Nadu. The agency said it has provisionally attached properties worth 44 crores of Ashwarya Rock Exports Madurai and other under the provisions of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Let's take a short break here.
Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. You're watching Constitutionally Yours. I will use the shield of faith uh -huh. to promote cow slaughter. The states have continuously failed to implement the ban on cow slaughter. Other section of the society, they are beef eaters. How are we the biggest exporter in beef? India is the largest uh, country in export of uh, beef. Join us as we try to understand contemporary issues related to the Constitution. Watch Constitutionally Yours on Rajya Sabha Television. The Sun Temple in Konark, Odisha, also called the Black Pagoda. Testament to the architectural brilliance and glory of the Ganga dynasty. This 13th century masterpiece was conceived as a gigantic solar chariot. Twelve pairs of exquisitely wheels, one for each month of the year, drawn by seven rearing horses, one for each day of the week. The temple comprises a sanctum with a lofty shikara, a jagmohana and a detached natya mandira in the same axis, besides numerous subsidiary shrines. Arisen from a multi hued cultural canvas. Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. The Tunisian man suspected of carrying out the deadly Berlin truck attack at the Christmas market on Monday was shot dead by police in Milan on Friday. The Italian government said Amri was fatally shot after he fired at two police officers who stopped his car for a routine identity check at around 3 a.m. The government said that identity checks had established without a shadow of doubt that the dead man was Amri. A man believed to be the suspect in the Berlin Christmas market truck attack was killed in a shootout on Friday in a suburb in the Italian city of Milan. The shooting reportedly took place before dawn. The dead man was identified as 24-year-old Tunisian Anis Amri. La persona uccisa è risultata essere dopo tutte le indagini che si fanno in questo caso senza ombra di dubbio Anis Amri il presunto sospettato dell'attacco terroristico a Berlino. The shooting in Milan was followed by news that German police had arrested two men suspected of planning an attack on a shopping mall in Oberhausen in North Rhine-Westphalia. The suspects were identified as two brothers aged 28 and 31 from Kosovo. Die Polizei Essen hat gestern gegen 18 Uhr einen Hinweis erhalten aus Sicherheitskreisen, dass möglicherweise ein Anschlag auf das Einkaufszentrum in Oberhausen oder auf den dazugehörigen Weihnachtsmarkt geplant sei. Daraufhin haben wir unsere äh, Polizeikräfte vor Ort verstärkt und wir haben natürlich parallel Ermittlungen aufgenommen zu den beiden Tatverdächtigen. On Thursday, the Christmas market reopened in Berlin, three days after a truck plowed into a crowd at the market, killing nine people and injuring 50 others. Flowers and candles were laid at the entrance of the Christmas market. Many people mourned the victims and prayed for those injured in the attack. We are going here because we want to show that life must continue, even after such a terrible day. Natürlich äh, fühle ich da mit, mit den Menschen, die, die dort auch äh, Angehörige oder Freunde verloren haben. Ähm, aber ansonsten äh, hat sich bei mir überhaupt nichts verändert. 
A massive influx of refugees is considered one of the reasons for the current insecurity in Germany. So whether the German government will review and readjust its refugee policy has been the major concern of the local people. I think there are white sheep everywhere, if they are under us. We can't pauschalize it, we don't want to pauschalize it. But when he does something, I think it doesn't belong in our country. The police have set up cement barriers in large Christmas markets all over the country to avoid a similar attack. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. An airliner on an internal flight in Libya was hijacked and diverted to Malta, where it landed a short while ago. The Airbus A320 was flying inside Libya for state-owned airline Afrika Airways with 118 people on board. Two hijackers had threatened to blow up the plane. The aircraft had been flying from Serbia in southwest Libya to Tripoli. The tiny Mediterranean island of Malta is around 500 kilometers north of Libyan coast. Libya has been in a state of chaos since Muammar Gaddafi was overthrown in 2011, leaving warring militias battling for control of different parts of the country. Forces loyal to a fledgling national unity government have taken control of the coastal city of Sithe, which has been a bastion for the Islamic State group since June 2015. Let's now take a look at some other international news in Global Buzz. At least 88 civilians were reportedly killed in 24 hours of Turkish airstrikes on an Islamic State group in northern Syria on Friday. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, a barrage of raids hit Al-Bab on Thursday, killing 72 civilians, including 21 children. Bombardment continued till today, leaving another 16 civilians dead. Turkish forces and their Syrian rebel allies have been seeking to capture Al-Bab about 25 kilometers from the northern Syrian border for weeks now. The World Health Organization on Friday said an experimental Ebola vaccine has been found to be 100% effective against the deadly virus. The vaccine is the first to prevent infection from one of the most lethal known pathogens. WHO said if approved, the vaccine would vastly reduce the likelihood of ever seeing another major Ebola outbreak. China said on Friday its government was paying attention to President-elect Donald Trump's Twitter post where he called for an expansion of the United States' nuclear capabilities. On Thursday, Trump called for an expansion of the United States' nuclear capabilities. The call has alarmed non-proliferation experts who said that a boost to the U.S. arsenal would fuel global tensions. Let's now take a look at some sports news. India jumped two places to finish this year, 2016, at 135th place in the latest FIFA football rankings. Their best in the last six years. In 2009, India had finished at 134. National coach Stephen Constantine attributed the upsurge to all his players and the staff. Constantine, however, said India have improved but there is still a lot more to achieve. India's five-time Winter Olympian Shiva Keshwanan clinched a gold medal at the Asian Lute Championship in Nagnao in Japan. Keshwan dominated the event and finished the second heat race with a time of 1 minute and 39.962 seconds and top speed of 130.4 km per hour. Chelsea has agreed to a £60 million move for midfielder Oscar to Shanghai SIPG. The club said his transfer move will be complete at the beginning of the January transfer window. Oscar had joined Chelsea in 2012 and had scored 38 times in 203 appearances for the club. That's all in this news bulletin. Keep watching Rajasabha Television.